All right, so in this brief tutorial, I'm going to go over how you can use the Google Colab um, with Piomo and be able to use um, Piomo software without installing it on your own computer. So um, this would be especially good if you have a Mac or if you're traveling around from computer to computer and um, you just want to be able to easily start some of your homework or share files with other students. To start off, we're going to follow the link in the description. Um, which will bring you to a, a Google Drive that has a whole bunch of files that we'll use throughout these tutorials. Um, but today, the file that you're looking for is piomo underscore hello world with Google Colab. Um, so what you want to do is download this uh, file. So download it, save it to your computer, um, and then we'll work with it in Google Colab. Okay, so now this computer, this file is on my computer. See, here he is. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my Google Drive account. So in Google Drive, I've created a folder called installation example. And I'm just going to upload this file to my Google Drive. I'm just going to drag and drop it right there. Now I see that I have this file, um, this PMO Hello World file. It ends with IPYNB. Um, I'm going to open this file right in Google Drive. So to open it, I'm just going to double click on it. And it kind of looks like this scary screen here, but up at the top it says open with Google Collaboratory. And I'm going to say, yes, that's exactly what I want to do. I'll click there. And now I see my file. And what this is, is this is a, basically it's a Jupyter notebook. And it allows me to have um, sections of text, and then sections of code. So in the sections of text, I sort of have some instructions. So um, this first part here, up here, says um, basically every time, every single model file that you're going to create in this class, if you're using the Google Colab, you're going to need this line here, which will install the PMO packages. So every time you start up this notebook, you have to run this line um, because it doesn't remember that you've installed it before. Um, so this line basically calls pip install and says, please install the PMO packages. Um, so we can run that. So if we, if we run that line, we can run it by just clicking this little arrow here. And it's not too, too speedy, but it's not so terrible that you want to avoid um, Google Colab because of it. Um, so it's going in and it's installing um, the Pioma libraries. Next up, we also need to install our solver. So to install our solver, um, which is GLPK, which is the linear, GNU Linear Programming Kit, uh, we have to have this line here. Um, which basically says, please go get the GNU Linear Programming Kit and save that file for me. You don't really need to know, understand the syntax too much, but just know that this line is downloading the GLPK solver, which we'll use later. Uh, so to run this line, we just click this little arrow here, and it's going to do a whole bunch of stuff. And we're just happy that we don't need uh, to worry too much about what exactly it's doing. All right, so it's installed our GLPK solver. Uh, step three, we're going to create a very simple model file. So in this model file, um, what we're going to have is a very simple um, objective function which basically says we're going to maximize the decision variable x. So we're also going to be creating a decision variable called x. And then we're going to be maximizing its value. And we have one constraint. Our constraint is that x can't be greater than or equal. It can't be greater than or equal to 100. So basically, we know the solution to this, right? If we want to maximize x, we want to make it as big as possible, but it can't be greater than or equal to 100 our optimal solution should come out when we solve this to say that x is equal to 100. 
Um, so the very first part of writing a linear program in um, Piomo is we have to import the Piomo libraries. So this first line here is importing the Piomo libraries so that we can use them. So um, further up, up before we were installing the PMO libraries, um, here we're saying, all right, now that you've installed them, I actually need to use them. Um, the next line, and we'll go through all these lines in much more detail on some of the labs, is we're creating a model object, and we're going to basically add um, things to our model object. Um, so the first thing we add to our model is a decision variable. Um, so our decision variable is named x. And the second thing we add to our model is a objective function. So our objective function is basically our expression is maximize x. And again, we're going to go through all of this syntax in much, much more detail in our um, first lab. And then finally, um, we're going to add a constraint. So we add a constraint to our model that says x can't be greater than or equal to 100. Um, and this creates our whole model for us. So we want to run this block of code um, by pressing this little arrow here. Now in the background, our um, program has created our model and is sort of holding this model variable um, in the background. And then our final step is to solve the model. So in order to solve the model, we need to um, use three lines of code. The first line is basically creating a type of object that knows how to solve models. So it's called a solver factory. And the first thing we do is tell it which solver to use. Um, so we're using the GLPK solver. Um, and the second thing we need to tell it is where to find that. Um, GLPK solver. So when we um, downloaded our, our GLPK solver earlier, it saved it in this location here, user bin GLP solver. Um, so up here earlier, when we installed GLPK, if you go uh, to this little folder here and click up, um, we can find that user folder. So here's the user folder and bin. And there's a lot of stuff in bin, so it takes a while to open. And it says that it's in user bin GLP saw. So if we go down to GLP saw, we should see it. There he is. So it's looking for this file here. So it's going to load that. It'll have the GLPK solver to use. And then um, our next line tells it, tells it to use this solver factory uh, to solve the model that we made earlier. And then this line will print out the results for us. Uh, so if we run this, it tells us that, all right, our decision variable was x, and our optimal value is 100, which is what we expected. And our objective function uh, has a value of 100 because it was just equal to x. And our constraints, the body of our constraint was equal to 100, meaning the left-hand side. And our upper limit was 100. So these are all expected things. And if you get um, this output here, you know that everything's set up correctly. Now let's just take a second. Let's go up here and let's just make a mistake. So let's say we... Um, I called the objective function wrong, and I, instead of calling objective, I, I, I misspelled it. I put two twos after it for some reason. If I run this line here, um, it's going to tell me that there's an error with this code. Um, so in particular, it's pointing me to uh, this line here, and it says, I don't know what objective 22 is. It's not part of my PLMO library. I've never seen this function before, um, and it's going to get mad. So we can go back in and say, ah, let me correct that. It was only supposed to be objective. I can run it again, and we'll see that those errors go away.
So as you're coding in Google Colab, you can um, create different chunks of code and run them individually. And it's a, it'll be a lot easier to find out where your errors are. Um, so for example, if I wanted to add a new section of code here, and in this code, I wanted to add a new constraint. So let's say I wanted to add constraint two. And I'm going to use that same syntax as above. EXPR equals model.x. We're going to have to say model.x has to be greater than or equal to 25. X must be at least 25. So here's a second constraint. And maybe I wanted to add some text before it to just say, hey, here we are adding a new constraint. Now I have some text that tells me what this block of code is doing. Um, I can run this. And now I know that now that I've run it, I didn't get any errors. I know that this one constraint, at least syntactually, is correct. Um, and I could have made each one of these lines its own little block of code. Um, so you can you know, expand or contract your blocks of code as you want so that um, it can be really easy to find exactly where um, your errors are in your code. Because sometimes PMO doesn't give you the most helpful error messages. All right, so that. Um, is how you run a concrete model um, using the Google Colab. Thanks.